Hello, 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 everybody. This is Dr. Shaniva Early, your craft doctor, and I'm back with a video again today. I have tried to make this video three, four times so far, and it has not worked out yet. I'm hoping that this one works, because if not, I think I'll call it a night, because it is like midnight. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is do a patch for Baby Parker um, in my Etsy store in my Shopify store. Um, it is driving me bananas because I have not been able to successfully do this. My machine keep acting up and I just took my other machine in for service and then this one wants to act up. So let's just get started. Okay, so I'm using the PE770. What I have done so far is um, I have a Tear away stabilizer, which is this piece. You can see that. Tear away stabilizer. This is some duck cloth, and then this is my final piece, this yellow, because I want the design to be on the yellow. So, what I did was I took some basting spray and I sprayed the design, uh, sprayed the fabric so that I can get. Um, so it won't move. Um, and look like it's doing pretty good so far. First time I did it, it turned out awful. Because I resized it. Also, I did not base down the fabric. And it got to... The baby bottle was almost finished and it started nesting. And if you if you know anything about nesting, um, your sewing machine will start like bunching up and it'll look like a bird's nest. That's why they call it nesting. Your bobbin thread, sometimes your top thread, it depends. Um, and that's what happened. And so I ended up having to cut it out of my machine, taking my machine apart and putting it back together. Well, when I did that, I didn't put it back together correctly. So, of course, um, my machine started acting up. Then when I finally get it back to semblance of working, was about my third time starting this video my husband came home from work and guess what happened yep you guessed it those dogs start barking so that barking noise I had to stop the video again so this is about number four um, video number four and I'm hoping that I can get through this video so you can at least get to see what the design looks like that I'm working on. It's super cute. I got this design from Etsy from a young lady named, or a, a shop named Classy Graffy. So it's like Graffy with a K, Graffy with a G, Embroidery, embroidery, something like that. Crappy grass, but it's an embroidery on Etsy. And so it's really cute, and so I'm trying to get it stitched out so you can finally see what the actual design is. I seen it and I thought it was super cute, and so I'm making a four by four patch. So that then I can put it on my little Parker's onesies. And as I explained in the other video, I got some onesies from Target. So if you know anybody who needs onesies up to 24 months, go to Target. They have a special going on where you can get these Gerber organic onesies 
five in a pack. And you get an extra one, so you actually get six. I got six in this pack for eight dollars, which was a very good price. That was a super price. Six onesies for eight dollars and they're Gerber um Gerber um organic cotton. I don't know what that is, but they're certified by I guess the baby place. Place where they certify baby clothes. Some type of textile certification. So that was really good. I ended up getting um, 12 onesies for $16. And so I want to put this on um, my little baby's onesie. Um, I'm going to put Heat and Bond Ultra on it. But I will actually sew them down also. Just some tack stitch, just not sewing around the whole patch. But I will do a couple of tack stitches just so um, they'll, they'll uh, withstand washing. Um, but that Heat and Bond Ultra is supposed to really withstand. Um, it's supposed to really withstand the washing. So the one thing that I have noticed about this one, which is probably why I should not have done what I did. I should not have redesigned it because it was already in the right size. I took the five by seven and I made it smaller to four fit, four by four kind of. And the stitches were too thick. And so it like was just really thick and it broke my needle. Um, and I talked about needles and it broke right then, which would, would have been good to see because I was able to change the needle, but it was horrible. It was so thick. Um, I have bought some Oregon needles, 10, 10 packs. And, um, okay, so now that's our first color. I'm gonna lift the presser foot. The one thing that's really good is the, this machine cuts the threads at the end. Um, I really like this embroidery machine, but I really want to get the one that has a bigger hoop. It's also twice the price. Um, this machine, uh, let me see if I can back. Oh, no, I need to keep you out like that. Sorry about that. Um, I'm threading the new color. Um, that machine is uh, at Joanne's, the bigger size hoop. It's like a six by ten. And it's $1,200 at Joann's. And I really want that one. But I have not done any due diligence as far as looking at reviews, finding out how people like it, or anything like that. So I won't buy it um, until I have done that. Um, but it's on sale. It's regularly $2,000. And it's on sale for $1,100. 99 uh, because I, I want two of these flatbed type machines even though you know I have a six needle because when I test out designs I want to be able to test out my designs and not only test one design at a time I did not digitize this I got this off Etsy off the crafty classy or whatever that Hold on a minute. Something's wrong. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell something is wrong because there is no blue. There's there's no blue thread on top. The thread on top is white and it should be blue. Okay, let's take this off and see what it looked like on the bottom. And let's lift up this presser foot. And, you know, it's just on the bottom. 
I don't know if this is me or I don't know. My bobbin thread came up. So that means something is wrong with my tensions. I believe that's what that problem is. Well, you know what? While I'm down here, and I just took this out and put this back in, so it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, this is this is what we deal with when we're doing this kind of stuff. Um, I know it's straight because I did look at a YouTube video and I matched it up and it's stitching. It just that whole portion should have been blue. Not I think. I don't know. Let's put this back on here. It's time for me to actually change the color. And I'm going to change my color. It's time to change my color to black. Um, and do the rest, do the majority of the design. And so let's see what's going on. like this video is going to be I don't know let's give it a try again okay I know I'm threading my machine correctly four okay see oh it's this I could put my needle down because it's going to start right there. And let's see. Okay. This is such a cute design. I don't know why it's causing this drama. Okay. So it looks like it's 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 looked like it's sewn correctly. I don't know what went on with that blue. I might not have had it threaded correctly, but this is how I test out my designs to make sure that they are testing sewn correctly. Um, I had to take the six needle in to get service. It was having a couple of issues. Plus, I had just pulled it out from the basement after being down there for a couple of years, but me not using it. And so I needed to get it serviced. So I took it in today to the embroidery company um, to get serviced. Let me see if I can move you in a little bit more so you can see this design. It's so cute. Wait till you see the words. That's the part that I think is so cute. Um, but I took it in to be serviced so that they can fix um, one of the, the other day when I hit one of the tension rod things, when a needle jabbed me, it broke off and they can fix that. And then they can update the machine to 2021 because the machine is a 2000, I got it in 2013, I believe. Well, originally my church bought it, so, um, but I, I got it from them a few years later. And then I did not do anything with it. And now I pulled it out in 21. And so it was just, it was necessary to do my due diligence. If I'm going to include embroidery things in my um, sh shop, I needed this to work. So, um, the last video, by the time it got to this point, 
I was at 39 minutes. And so that lets me know that I should not have um, changed the sizing of my design because it was just too dense. And now I'm only at 15 minutes and the bottle is almost done. So that lets me know that I was wrong in doing that. And so I'm glad I was able to fix it. Glad I was able to fix it. I didn't fix it. What I ended up doing was um, deleting that one and picking the right score by the So this is at this point in the last one is where it messed up. So it didn't even get to this point. So I'm happy that it is getting to this point. So that means it may just work itself out. Um, I use 6D embroidery software. Six called 6D Extra. And that software is old. The new one is 6D Premiere, I think. But the software is still up to date. I, I have all of the things. Um, that software was very expensive in 2013. Um, and it was the newest software out then. And the newest software out now is kind of the same thing. It's just... Um, It's the, it's the same thing. It's, it's design software. Um, but you got to keep the dongle. It's a little bitty dongle thing that you have to keep. Because if you don't keep that dongle, you're going to be in trouble. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to stop this only because I want to cut this jump stitch. The one thing about the other machine that is also more expensive is that it cuts the jump stitches for you automatically. Um, so that software was very expensive, but in order for me to do any kind of digitizing or di uh, designing, um, I needed the software. Because when I originally started working, I started to use, I only created designs in the machine. And I wanted to do stuff outside of the machines and buy designs and that kind of stuff. So I was able to do so with that 60 system. But without that dongle, life would not, it, it would not work. That's the only hang up. But it's kind of also the same with um, all of the software right now. Most people use Imbrilliance. That's the one that I hear the most. But it's a computer-based software that you have to design on your computer. And you can buy the digitizing portion and, and that type of thing. So that's really good. Um, but it ended up being the same price because if you think about it, the software that I have can be upgradable. Um, and it's made for Brothers and Baby Lock because Brothers and Baby Lock machines are made in the same factory. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop because I wanna I wanna catch that jump stitch. I'm gonna catch it from here, and then I'll do that one. Um, Brothers and Baby Locks machines are made in the same factory. 
Um, and so they're very much similar. And so I believe the software is too. I don't really know. I just, I've never worked with Embrilliance, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. But since I have this software, I'm not gonna change. Um, I, I am going to find out about the digitizing portion because it's supposed to be digitizing software included, I think. Um, and if it's not, I will get that portion so I can be able to design my own um, designs. And if not, I'll just send my files off to somebody who knows what they're doing because I'm not a computer person. Computers don't really like me that much. <laughs> but I, I had to take that other machine in because if I'm going to do any scalable work, I, I need that machine to be ready. And for this, 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 this flatbed and the other flatbed that I want to get, the both of them will be used to test out designs before I take them and do multiple. So on the big machine, I can do a big hoop that's 8 by 12. So this 4x4, four four, I should be able to put at least four of them in the big hoop and do them quickly. As opposed to using this one and getting one. Um, and I'm looking at getting a red line industrial machine. And if you're looking into going into business, Baby Lock and Brother is the ones that most people get. But if you want to do some high speed stuff, look into an industrial size machines like 12 needles for the same price as a baby lock um i'm sorry as a brother i believe you can get a 12 needle industrial machine but there's a lot that goes with those industrial machines because these machines are home machines um, so you have to do your due diligence when you're looking at this kind of stuff. Um, I'm looking at the red line. The baby's booty got the red line and did a demo and she's been working with it. And I'm looking at getting one. And it's like $6,000. But you get two of each hoops. You get thread. You get a lot of perks to go along with that. But for brother... It's seven thousand, seven thousand, and you get you don't get that stuff. So it's worth looking into. And so if I'm going to do this with any kind of scaling, then I need a machine that can do a lot. So I would have two flat beds and two, well, one six needle and one 12 needle. Because I really wanted to do a lot of patches. And the industrial, if I get the 15 needle, which is a couple of thousand more, the hoop is gigantic. The hoop is like 12 by 24 or something like that. 12 by 22 or something like that so it's huge y'all it's huge i don't i'm not gonna do clothes so i don't need a hoop that big so i will be getting the smaller machine but it has 12 change colors or 12 spools So I can change it, the colors. But that is not something I'm going to do right away. That is in my near distant future. <laughs> I have to prove that I can earn money first from my six needle first. 
which is not hard because I've done it before. I literally paid for the six needle machine in six weeks. I think I was telling y'all that before. Isn't that super cute? Y'all see, starting to see the words form. And I, I kept doing stuff for my daughter and I keep forgetting that my granddaughter has a daddy. <laughs> so I'm doing a patch for her daddy. And it's funny, I just, um, yesterday my daughter came over while her fiance was doing something else and I felt the baby move for the first time and it was so exciting. And I know y'all probably like, stop talking about your grandbaby unless you have grandkids and you know how I feel. <laughs> and it's almost done with this first stage well it's, the design is almost done literally the last video was 39 minutes and I had only done the bottom I had not even gotten to the words yet so this is at 26 minutes and I'm almost well I'm done with the original design and then I added the frame to it so um i added the frame on my machine it tells me what color thread to use and i'm just following that and that's a pumpkin color i had closed all of these down um the chart gives you the colors and that says 126 and this is like a pumpkin color which is weird but the um the actual um, color of the the actual color of the what do you call that thing um, frame is going to be red so okay so I'm going to put this down and now I'm doing this is the placement stitch or what is called the run stitch so if I wanted to put fabric in there that's what this stitch is for called the run stitch okay and so now this is telling me to replace this thread with 812 which should be a red color 812 no it's called golden yellow and it's 812 it's a golden yellow 812 and see these are these these um threads i've i just got this box of threads see this i just got these um and so because i did not have colors of embroidery thread um at the ready and so I'm going to first thread this machine. Go under there. Before I do the cutaway. Oh, come on. Okay, so this goes up there, and that goes up there, goes around there. And then needle thread. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens now. So what I have to do is take this out and cut around. Let's 
that uh, I'm gonna bend my phone down let me pull that back okay so what I have to do next is cut around this stitching and I did not grab that black piece but what you do is you cut around the stitching so that when you get that satin stitch you don't have to worry about jagged edges and these scissors are um, what they consider trimming scissors or embroidery scissors or something and it trims up close to the line and uh, you can see that my hand is probably in the way and what I'm doing is I'm just cutting close to that line without cutting the line and so these are like these scissors are curved so you can be able to go right up to that line and make sure that you turn your um, hoop don't turn your hand in an odd direction they have some applique scissors which I think this is what these are called that gets a lot closer and so I'm just going to cut away because I don't want that satin stitch to grab onto this so I always just cut away a little bit around it so that that doesn't happen now the one thing that I'm going to have to do is once this is done I'm gonna have to cut this black fabric because I remember I told you I double layered this so maybe I can do that now so I don't have to do it later Let's see, can I get it okay now so since I double layered that I'm going back in and I'm cutting away the black also and I'm only doing it because this double is a double layer so you won't have to do this if you put a single layer I, I just really wanted this yellow fabric to be shown but when I did it before it was just not thick enough most people use twill underneath um, their patches I, I bought some duck cloth because it was so it's supposed to be much thicker but I'm probably going to have to go to the fabric store and just get some twill because this duck cloth I like it it's thick but I don't have anything but black <laughs> okay so let's cut some of this away okay and see I'm just going close up to those stitches and because I put that fabric spray stuff it's really um, still holding on okay and so I'm just cutting away so that we're not satining stitching on top of this people do is they take a um I'm just cutting the jump stitches they have a uh, what do you call that um they use a sticky thing and roll it across I can't think of what the heck the name of that thing is lint roller people use a lint roller to get up all these threads and I was at Target today and I forgot it again Okay, I'm going to try to remember it tomorrow and I'll put it on my list. Okay, and I'm just going to clean up. Okay, so now let's bring her back in. This is my 
machine. Embroidery machine. Her name is Betty. But that's my mom. That was my mom's name. So my embroidery machine name is Betty. This one is Big Betty. Okay, press her foot down. And now this is going to do a stitch around. And where it's doing the stitch around is where the edge of the satin stitch will start. And, oops, I'm sorry. And I should be getting out the thread because it's red. But I don't know which color. I think it's going to be eight or seven. I hope because that's what's in my hand. And it's not. It's 107. And let's see what color 107 is. It's a dark fuchsia. And I have not used 107 yet. So that is also ooh, a new color. Um, 107. Here we go. I love that these designs come with so many different colors. I'm sorry. Okay. So we're going to uh, take this up. We're going to pull this off, and now we have our last color change. And I'm not supposed to pull upward. I'm supposed to pull downward because it's, it messes up your tensions, um, is what I've been told. But I'm so hard-headed sometimes, and I'll be mad if my tensions are messed up. Make sure that you hold the edge of that thread when you start threading your machine so then your thread is not flopping around. I'm going to thread it. And now we're going to do the frame. I'm putting my needle down. And here we go. So now this is going to do the satin stitch. So this is doing like a zigzag type of stitch. Right now. Or yeah, I guess you can call it a zigzag stitch. Let's see if I can move it all up. Look at that daddy's drinking buddy. He's so cute. And so I'm almost done with this design and it only took me um, 39 minutes, but the last one, it was 39 minutes just to do the bottom. Like I said before, don't fool around with these different types of designs. Um, because you mess them up if you don't want to do it like I did. And I'm recording this on my phone again. This iPhone has a great camera. And I have the Argon stand and it's on the floor and I got it like twisted to see so you can be able to see the stitches. So I think this is a great angle when I'm doing embroidery. I'm probably gonna to have to figure out or get my tripod when I'm doing um, sewing and, and when I'm doing sewing and um, what else do I do? Sewing and surgery. Sorry about the puppy. My husband came in to see the wants to play. It's his play toy and every time he comes home he wants to play. And it's funny because every time he comes near me the dog barks. Like he does not want him to play with me. It's funny. Every single time. It's the funniest thing ever. He barks at me. He doesn't want him to play with me.
embroidery stuff inside of it because I had it laying everywhere and it was getting on my nerves and so I bought the part. this raggedy piece all I have to do with that is use my embroidery scissors and cut that away um, that's because of the little straggly threads also when you do this you should put the fray check on the edges sewing and so now we're gonna take this out of here I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna turn off my machine because I don't need that anymore and then I'm going to unhoop this okay I'm just unhooping the design I, I won't have to worry about that unhooping stuff because I bought a um, magnetic hoop. Okay, so let's see. How am I going to do this? There we go. I just put the, bend it down a little bit. Okay, so what I did was I took this and I just teared it out. I this is tear away. So I just took this out of here. And this is our patch. Isn't it gorgeous? So now all I have to do is go around the edges and clean up those little threads and the tear away stuff. That is But you have to be very careful. Usually you use water soluble, but I used it all today. And see, let's see. I'm going around and I'm just clipping, clipping with these scissors. That's why you use water soluble because you want it, it'll dissolve. Um, but I have this tear away, which works too. And just, I'll clean up this patch. And then after you're done with that, there's all of these stitches back here. You clip all of these stitches. These are all the jump stitches. And you don't want them on there. Okay. And then at, in the back of this, I have Heat and Bond Ultra. I will take some Heat and Bond Ultra um, after I finish clipping it really well and put on the back of this 
so that we can okay so you see you clean up all of your let me do that now so when you clean up all of your stitches all of the frays all of this all of this will be gone um And all of our little thingies here. Okay, so that is what you do with that, right? Okay, so now you, I have that. And then I bought the gigantic heat and lawn. Oh, it's underneath this table. Where I'm at. So let me, while wow, y'all looking at the cute patch. I'm gonna go under my table and open up the heat and bond box. And I'm just going to cut off a piece. I love this little cricket. This is little cricket heat press thingy here. Okay. So I can actually unplug my machine. I bought a, a um six-way um surge protected um for my machines because I blew a blew out the cording yesterday day before yesterday whatever day i was working i made a mistake and um put my sewing machines on the same circuit as my other stuff okay where is my pad okay so this is the cricket pad and what you want to do is you want to take your heating bond and you want to heat this. And I'm using the wrong scissors. Where is my scissors? I'm trying to put everything in, in the tray. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut away this heating bond just like that, right? And my little guy is heating up. And this has like a rough side. You can see that texture and a paper side. And so the design goes down on that rough side. And it'll go down like that. Okay, so my little thingy is ready. And I'm going to take a Teflon sheet and put this right like that over this Teflon sheet that goes to my heat press and so it it's, I didn't that's what the problem was and that's what I thought I need to be on this side of it so see if you heat it um, this I don't know what degrees this little thing gets up to. I need to get my little 
gun and um, see what heat it gets up to. But you heat this up until it kind of looks wet. And that's the glue. The glue is sticking on the patch when it starts to look wet. If you can see it, it's starting to look wet. That's the um, glue being transferred. And so when I'm working with little patches like this, this is perfect for this. First of all, I don't need to heat up a big iron. And you see, I literally just turned that on and you've seen it, how quickly it heated up. And now um, I'm just making sure that the, the glue is transferring so there will not be any left on this paper. And make sure you use some kind of other paper or a silicone thing like that. And yeah, so see, I need to go around the edges a little bit more. And I have a all four heat presses, so if I needed to, I could bring out my other bigger heat press and just, whoosh, but. This one is just so handy and easy. And so, okay. So I'm gonna turn her off. And you get a chance to see this in action. I'm letting this kind of cool. I'm letting it kind of cool. And now, there we go. And I'm pressing that because um, the fabric itself, I was supposed to put um, on the fabric heat and bond light, but I haven't gotten it yet. And so you can now peel this off. And get this off and around the edges. Because it's, it's just glue. And I can trim it down really good once I use the lighter. And it will be cleaned up. And so this is what it looks like it's close didn't that turn out fabulous so after I trim off I can now you can see that it's shiny in the back see how it's shiny I can now iron this on to um, whatever I want to and that heat and bond will make it stick I'm going to sew it on though, but it's made to be, I, I always tell you, and, and inside of my instruction thing, it's going to say it has heat and bond ultra so that you can be able to iron it on. But if you're going to wash it, I would advise you to tack it down. So that'll be in the care instructions for this design. So daddy's drinking buddy. That's going to be one of the patches for my new shop. All right, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.